In this video, we're going to be talking about fiscal year starts. However, in Tableau, you can only really set it up to a month level. So what do you do if you want to set your fiscal year start mid of that month? Well, you can't. So I'm going to show you a trick on how to actually solve this issue using a combination of Tableau and Excel. So let's get started right now. <laughs> All right, so here we are in Tableau, and I'm going to load up a, the Superstore data set, which I use all the time. Uh, if you want to follow along with this, uh, it is in the description below. So let's just load that up. Okay, so I'm going to drag and drop. And before we begin, I'm going to just show where this question came from. So Suresh, uh, you asked this question. Uh, I would like to start the fiscal year, uh, the fiscal week number from 1st to the 3rd, so 1st of uh, March. In the looks of it, first of March, rather than oh sorry, not first of March. This looks like the um sorry third day of January. I think it's American, um, as opposed to the first of January. So in Tableau, you can only really do it at a month level, right? So I've been practicing on this just for the last few minutes, and let me show you kind of how it works. Here we are in Tableau with the Superstore data set, and we're going to use this order date field. So let's have a look. I'm going to go sheet one. Okay, let's bring in this order date. So I'm going to right click drag uh, and I'm going to pick year. And this is just to show the start of that year. And let's expand this uh, a few times. Expand, expand, and expand. Okay, so it's going to be very long, but that's okay. And let's just put some values in here. So sales into the rows, just so we can kind of see when the start is. So this one says third of January, but that's most likely just by chance. So let's look for 2018. Uh, 2018. Okay, 2018 is here. Let's see where it starts. So you can see here it's starting on the first. So from the looks of it, by default, it always starts on the first of January. So you have two options for changing the fiscal uh, year, which is you can go in here uh, into your connection, go date properties, but you'll notice you can only really start fiscal year start or you can set it on a day, but I played with this and it didn't really work very well for me and I couldn't get, really get it working. So I kind of gave up on that. Uh, the other way is if you right click on the, uh, on the field itself, you can go uh, default properties, fiscal year start, but again, this only does it at a month level. So whenever you kind of come across a problem where Tableau can't do it, now you kind of have to use your creative juices. And here's one way you can do it. And you can apply this to other types of problems as well, not just dates. So when we look at this particular problem, what we really want to do is we want to group them if it reaches a certain date. So one way you can do it, and for people who are kind of not super strong with formulas, this is probably the easiest way. So I'm going to open a fresh Excel file, and we're simply going to create a artificial grouping. Okay, so let's call this date control, and we'll start on 2016. And the reason is, my data set starts uh, in 1st of January 2017. So we just give it a little bit more space. And we're going to do a few things. We're going to go day, month, year. Now, by the way, there's heaps of ways you can solve this particular problem, but this is just a good way that I can show you. Uh, and then we're going to call this the group. And I'm going to write a formula, say so day. Oop. And the only reason I do this is so that I can do filtering easily. Month and year. All right. And then what we're going to do is we're going to extend this. So just highlighting everything and then using the fill handle and just kind of go down for a while. Ba, 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 ba. So I'm just going to maybe do up until 2022 or something like that. There you go, 2023. As long as the, the range is higher than what's available in your data set. All right. So then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a filter here. So I'm going to go data filter. And we're going to look for the start date. So in that particular one, it was the 3rd of January. So I'm going to filter first for the 3rd. That's going to give me the 3rd of every single month. Then I'm going to filter again for January, which is the number 1. And there we have it. So those are 3rd of January for every single year. And I'm going to go uh, call this group 1, group 2, 3, uh, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Then I'm going to remove the filter. So it's just clear. 
Okay, so we got the star, and now we want to fill the rest of this. So this one's actually going to be group zero. Okay, because it's that previous here. And then what I'm going to do is um, a trick that I learned just recently. If you select the first one, I'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom, highlight the last spot here. Then we're going to go home, find and select, go to special, blanks. Now, I did a whole video on this, so um, which I released just a few days ago. So if you're not sure of how to do it or you're confused, check out that video um, and it'll all make sense. So blanks, I'm going to highlight all the blanks. Then I'm going to press equals up. All right, so equals one above and I'm going to press control, enter. And that will fill in all the gaps with all the groups. Cool. Then I'm going to highlight the whole column, copy and paste the values just to get rid of the formulas. And that's pretty much it. So now I'm going to save this as a date um, data set. So downloads, I'm going to call it. The computer's running a bit slow at the moment. I think I'm one of my games is updating or something like that. Okay, let's just call this date control save. Yes, replace it because I did this before. I'm going to close this up. So now back here in Tableau, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into Edit Data Source. And I'm going to do a join to that table we just made. So if I double click this just to get out of the blend function, here we are in joins. And I'm going to bring in that data set we just did, which is this date control. I'm just going to drag and drop. Okay, Here we are. And we're going to do a inner join. So basically what's going to happen is an inner join will work fine, mainly because I know for a fact that every value in the order date for this problem is filled in with a date, which means it will connect to something here. I also know in terms of joins, it's a many to one relationship, meaning there are multiples of the same date on one, but the sheet one, the one we just built, is a unique list, which means it will not create duplicates. The only time we create duplicates when it comes to joins is many-to-many -many relationships. So I'm going to leave that on inner. I'm going to connect order date with the date control. And we're going to use that group function to actually group them. Now, I should point out that because this is like a hard join, meaning it's connecting to just one field, this grouping only applies to order date. So if you have another field that uses date, Right, such as a uh, ship date, uh, you won't be able to use the grouping on the same in the same way because these dates don't necessarily correspond to the order date. They're not like exactly the same. So if you were to group these ones, you'd need to do another join and do that. Um, that is kind of like a look. It's not the nicest way to do it, but if you're just getting started and you're not super advanced user and you just want to get it working quickly, this is really nice. If you are a bit more advanced and you want it to be a bit more dynamic and you don't have to do this stuff every time, one thing you could possibly try, and I don't know if this will work, is instead upload the Excel file as a blended connection and then you just sort out the relationships as you're building in Tableau. So if you're not sure what I mean by that and you want to learn it, just drop a comment and I'll do a video on that. Um, but I don't, yeah, I don't know how many people are going to want to know that. It's a bit more advanced. All right, so we've got the join set up. I'm going to go sheet one. All right. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch this actually to a bar. Ugh, gross. Um, I just had a hot dog. That's why. <laughs> um, and the only reason I'm switching that to a bar is just so I can see the colors uh, when we add this. So I'm going to go into here. I'm going to look for group. And I'm going to add group two. Let's add it to the label. Okay, here we go. Let's have a look. So group two starts on the third. I'm going to scroll until it changes to 2018. And I and what I should see is that the grouping will overlap into the next year. Okay, so 2018 January. Here we go. So you can see. So the transition from group two to group three, maybe I can zoom in there. Transition from group two to group three does indeed happen on the third. So now every single one going forward will also have the same grouping. So in terms of how to control this data now, I can have two things. So I've just compressed this down to just year and sales. If you do it this way, it's just starting from the first of the month. If you switch year for group, 
swap them around. This now uses the new grouping that you did. So if you want to change the position, simply go back to the Excel file and change it. Um, so it was, it's kind of what we call a static Excel file, meaning it, it's fixed. It's not going to self adjust, self adapt. It's something you have to go in and modify, right? But this is one way you could solve your problem, um, Suresh. Uh, going forward. So I hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any questions, drop a comment and um, possibly I'll create more videos on whatever you guys ask. But until then, have a good day and bye.